In late November last year, NASA's InSight lander successfully touched down on Mars near the equator in an area known as Elysium Planitia. That's an area just south of one of the most previously volcanic areas on Mars, Elysium. So why put one of Earth's most expensive toys next to a bunch of volcanoes? Well, they're almost certainly all inactive, but NASA's InSight lander, or interior exploration using seismic investigations, geodesy and heat transport is there to investigate the interior of Mars and to find out more about the rocky planet's formation. For this, InSight has been equipped with five main instruments. First and foremost is size. The seismic experiment for interior structure is its main seismometer. RISE, the rotation and interior structure experiment, is focused on tracking the red planet's rotation. HP cubed is there to measure the amount of heat rising to the surface. The InSight flux gate, or IFG, is a magnometer. And last but not least, APSS, or the auxiliary payload sensor system, is a complete weather station, which can measure things like temperature, wind speed, wind direction, and atmospheric pressure. On December 1st, 2018, the seismometer still being on the lander, started picking up vibrations from the solar panels, which started vibrating due to the 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. That's pretty much the exact process that goes on inside of our ears when we hear stuff. Uh, our cochleas, I hope that's the right pronunciation, pick up vibrations from the air and send nerve signals to our brains, which we interpret as noise. But instead of having cochleas, InSight has vibrating solar panels and a seismometer, which then sends its data back to NASA, which would be the brain in this analogy. So here's what that Martian wind actually sounds like. Another instrument capable of detecting this wind noise was listening in, the air pressure sensor from the weather station, or APSS. Now, because the air itself on Mars is so thin, the pressure variations, also known as sound, picked up by the barometer were at much lower frequencies. Uh, here's what that sounded like, courtesy of the lander's APSS. That is so cool that we are even able to witness that. It's so like eerily similar, but so alien. As of now, NASA has four publicly stated goals that it wants to accomplish in regards to Mars. Goal one is life, finding out if Mars has ever supported life. Goal two and goal three are understanding more about its climate and geology. I think insight kind of falls into both of those categories. Goal four eventually is humans, uh, sprinkling some humans on the surface. And this makes sense, we want to learn as much as we can about a planet before we just send some humans that are alive to the surface of it for obvious safety reasons, or not so obvious science fiction reasons. And humans have collected a lot of data over the years on Mars. Quick side note, if you want to look at all the orbiters and landers we've sent to Mars over the past 20-something years, it's actually pretty cool. It's on NASA's website. Okay, bye. And, you know, why would we stop with InSight? Uh, in development right now, NASA has the Mars 2020 rover they're working on. Remember those goals I was just talking about? Um, it looks like this Mars 2020 rover is going to be focused on goal one and goal four, which is life and humans. It is apparently going to be testing out a new drill NASA's been working on. It is going to be taking... Uh, core samples out of rocks and soil sediments and it's going to be setting them aside for later microbiology testing. It's also going to have some equipment with it that will help us to understand and kind of grasp what our potential human habitability looks like. It's going to be testing out some equipment designed to turn some of that Martian CO2 into oxygen, which is important for human breathing. It's also going to have equipment that can identify possible resources, i.e. underground water or ice. And it's going to be able to analyze weather patterns and take in environmental data, which is going to be very important if we ever want to set up some kind of Mars base. I mean, it's just like my grandma used to say. Jay, you do not want to be stranded on the North Pole in flip-flops. My grandma was so wise. 
The 2020 rover is set to launch somewhere around the middle of next year and land sometime in February 2021. I'm obviously very excited to see this thing touch down on Mars. If NASA has a live feed of the landing, my eyes will be glued to it. Well, that is about all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope all of you enjoyed that as much as I did. If you like science and engineering related content, make sure to subscribe and um, leave a comment with your own personal alien abduction story or your favorite kind of jello. Okay, bye.